is one name I love to call The name of Jesus Demons can't withstand No other name I know I can deliver At the mention of the name Every knee must bow Great to have you join us. This is Close Flow coming to you from NTA2 Lagos Network Center. Well, uh, bringing from Nigeria, we are sure that all of you from all over the world, you are staying quite glued to your TV uh, screens to get to know who our guest again will be on this great show. Uh, this show is about, um, well, it's about you and I, about uh, how we are joining the narrative on Nigeria, how are we helping to um, either repackage or retell the story of how Nigeria is growing to become a united nation or how we are not doing enough to make sure that we congregate to make Nigeria become one of the greatest nations on the face of the earth. So who are we asking to join us today? Well, we have yet another distinguished Nigerian who is going to be seated I'm not saying that it's, uh, the, the seat is hot, but I'm just saying that uh, this distinguished guest will be seated and will be very, very ready to look at um, the issues of how Nigeria can become better than the way it is today. Our guest, incidentally, leads the uh, Sanctuary for the Brokenhearted, which is uh, a Christian ministry. Um, our guest is also a revered international conference speaker, a very erudite author. Um, our guest is a life impacting influencer, a social mobilizer, and of course, a TV personality. But the most important uh, um, element that we need to remember about our guest is that our, our guest is very prophetic. Now, Prophetic, that is an assignment, a spiritual assignment that is almost as, um, uh, as classified as leading either a nation, a community, a family, a group, a business. You are saying that you have been assigned the responsibility as to become the chief responsibility officer of that particular area. That is what our guest uh, who our guest is. Now, so what are we asking our guest to do? Our guest is currently the president of the Nigerian Clergymen and Women, UK. But right now, uh, because I've not defined this, the genetic of our, girl, of our guest, I've not said if it's a he or a she, many of you will be wondering who this is. Okay, so uh, our guest incidentally also is a builder of an orphanage here in Nigeria. We are in Nigeria, you will get to know. Here in Nigeria, where the intention is to provide accommodation for internally displaced persons, poor homeless people, or impoverished Nigerians. Now, that, that is a huge assignment. Providing accommodation we also may require that you also have to provide you know, food, because now uh, we know we are fasting as Muslims, but some people have been fasting before this fasting actually started. So now you may also need to provide food for these Nigerians. So our guest is um, here to unravel how we can employ true love and sincere empathy. True love and sincere empathy to become the solution that will strengthen our desire to become a united nation. The divisiveness in Nigeria, the ethnic uh, bigotry in Nigeria, all these things we are saying can be overcome. We can change the narrative. We can turn the story around. We can actually say to ourselves that we are Nigerians and we are one, and we can be united. But if you don't come together to say it, that means we are going to be disunited. So wait. For a minute, we get to meet our guest, and then I will get to introduce you to our guest. Stay with us.
That it is. We have a distinguished advocate of uh, humanitarian and uh, philanthropy here with us, who also is a servant of the Most High. I always call her Queenie Prophetess. You're welcome to Close Flow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Um, well, Dr. Margaret, how, how do I introduce her to Nigerians again? I'm sure many Nigerians know you because of your um, exploit in trying to see how we can overcome poverty. But this is a serious discussion now that yes. we want to uh, engage with. And um, we are looking at... Uh, now, okay, let's start from the top. Okay. okay, now for your apostolic mission, which you have been doing for 20 almost 20 years now. 20 years, this is 2024, yes. 20 years, two decades. Now, some people are saying that we are too religious, but we are not righteous we are just religious people mm -hmm. we like to proclaim that we love god but we are not that's not what that's not what nigerians are now, how, how do you react to that i think um the statement is um, quite true because when you look at nigeria as a whole we have um, churches mosques all over the place you know in a particular street you might have almost 20 churches or even mosques yes but when you look at us critically as individuals we do not exhibit love hmm. and god is love why i say that is um, because i'll give you a scripture to, in john chapter 13 verse 34 it said a new commandment i give you, to you. that I, that you love one another just as i have loved you for also are uh, to love one another hmm. to love one another we cannot say as a nation when I was growing up, yes, uh, my maternal home, they're still predominantly Muslims. Muslims, yes. We even have a mosque. And my father came from a Christian background. But we used to intermarry. There was no problem. We didn't have issue of religion. But now they've turned it upside down. You cannot claim to say you love somebody. Love, you, if you, God is love. Yes. And you need to show that love to your neighbor. Some people, they have meals. They can eat 24 hours three times or even four times five a day. times a day whereas so you see your neighbor the child is not going to school you see a child is crying near you you know they are hungry and you close your bar of mercy that's not love and that's what i see here in this country okay now uh, i love the way you have said it because looking back yeah. growing up you have given, you have cited an example yeah. of how we lived now so this communal life that we used to have which in a way, was part of our culture, mm -hmm. part of our inter, inter relationships. Yes. Can we ever get to rebuild? Can we ever revisit and rebuild and reconnect with that same cultural past? You think it's possible as we go into this new future that we are seeing? Do you think we can we can regain? Like we're writing back, looking back. Really. Yes. Because I mean, even if you're going to move forward, you need to look from where you're coming from. Then we have to retrace our footstep and ask ourselves the truth. Where did we fall? Hmm. Where did we fall as a nation? Where did we go wrong? Where did we go wrong? How come uh, we have used religion now as a base? I am a, I'm a Muslim. A Muslim is a human being. A Christian is a human being. Uh, a traditionalist is a human being. But the, the theme of it is love. Love for one another. So if we are going to, we need to look back. Where did this nation fall off is a bandwagon hmm. as a nation because if you see if you go outside and you see your neighbors if you see people some people are even walking on the road believe yes. me if you touch them they might faint i just had a crusade let me just chip in yes in kogi state in okene precisely a woman was standing um to be you know among the people that was going to be given food, food. the next minute we saw her slum we have to rush her buy her drink and give her bread to eat. We asked her, what's the matter? She said, I've not eaten all day. I mean, this is it. I can't understand it. How can this happen in 2024, 63 years after we have an independence? It's a huge error on our part. We have a, look at the mask uh, of this country. We have land we can cultivate. We can, so what's making people not to cultivate? What is the empowering power? The government is supposed to empower people at least. If it's land, let them give them to be farming so they can help themselves. Why should people in this age be fainting, for God's sake? Because of food. Because of food. <laughs> now, okay, um, well, the conversation, like we say on this show, is about you. So uh, I'm going to give you the numbers. 
where you're going to call, no, send your text, sorry, or WhatsApp us, so you can put your questions across to the prophetess, so she can also help us to address properly some of the elements that she has pointed out to all of us here now. Now, you have recalled again our past. Now, some people are saying that, so why are you a prophetess? Yes, thank you. So, why are prophetic statements no longer being used to curtail the roles or the duties or the functions of leaders, heads of state, governors, uh, uh, legislators, even chairmen? Why are we not using prophetic, prophetic statements to control? I think we've lost the, this glorious, awesome office of a prophet because there are so many um fake people oh. that have infiltrated us so nice the people are finding it difficult to know which is real and which, which is, is fake and sadly sometimes the fake one is the one that they go to because when you say thus says the lord, lord yes and to the glory of god i can trace back all the years that the lord has given me prophetic prophetic messages for nations you know in the bible is the prophet that goes to anoint the king. Yes. That took place recently in England yes. when Prince, uh, King Charles was, was being anointed, yes. uh, anointed or he was being consecrated to be the, uh, the king. Yes. Uh, it was the, the prophet, it was the, uh, the priest. bishop yes. that anointed him because they even had to put him in a cubicle. Yeah. That means the role of a prophet is very, very critical. The prophet directs. You God will show us things before it happens. And then we will come out and say, this is what the Lord is saying. And God will always send different, different prophets to different leaders. Yes. But what the sad part of it is that most times they look at your gender. Oh, she's a woman. In the face of God, I am not a woman. I'm a spirit. So, <laughs> sorry. So, yes. I'm not a spirit. so what God is saying, stop looking down on the vessel God is using to speak, speak to, to you. you. Okay, all right, so you have, you have heard it from the uh, prophetess herself that uh, some of our leaders should listen, yes. should uh, be attentive mm -hmm. to some of these pronouncements because it's all about where the future of the nation lies. Even this, now, um, this Boko Haram, I remember about 12 years ago, the yes. Lord, when that was when they were, this Boko Haram was just coming up, the Lord told me that they, he referred to this Boko Haram as a serpent. The Lord said, tell it was during the time of Jonathan. He said, yes. tell him to kill this serpent or they will have babies and will not be able to curtail it. Now we've had babies. Has the serpent not We have baby babies? serpents now. Yeah, lots of them. And, we you know, it's out of control. But <laughs> if they had listened to the word of God at that point and the instruction the Lord gave, this will not, this. will not be in this man. God will always, show, will always show his prophet. He said, I will do nothing except I first reveal it to first my prophet, the servant, Amos 3, 7. So until we begin to listen to true prophets of God that are not, their hands are not soiled and their stomach is not become their God, then we will see prophetic direction for this nation. Now, well, uh, thank you, Professors. Again, we, we've had some trending stories about uh, the fact that, uh, well, uh, Christianity developed uh, Western Europe and America and all that. Mm -hmm. Islam dis developed uh, the, the Middle East and Arab countries. Yes. Both religions have actually impoverished Nigerians. That's what some people are saying. So because we, we, have we, missed, we have missed, some of us have misinterpreted, the, you know. Yeah, Christianity is a way of life. It's not a religion. It's a way of life. It's your personal work with God. Your relationship. It's your own personal work, work with, with God. So when we now t turn it around and we begin to commercialize it, we begin to, some people that are speaking and that God has not sent them. And, mm. They have sent themselves. So those people, the few prophets that are the true prophet of God, that God, heaven has anointed from heaven, when we speak, it comes to pass. Because what is the evidence? You know, if you catalog by the grace of God, I mentioned, mentioned that uh, Prince Charles, the Lord, for instance, last year, yes. for instance, last year, the Lord showed me he was going to be ill. Sadly, the man is sick. Um, and you, are, you declared it? I declared it publicly. I made a video about it. I even this our present predicament. Remember when I came, it was last, last year. Yes. I said our um, Naira was going to go down. The Lord showed it to me, and I said it. You know, when we say things like this, it's not because we just come here to blab or to just say or uh, so that you can be noticed. God is speaking. God is still speaking to a few people that you know has their ear to the mouth of God. Okay, thank you for that. Um, let me quickly give our viewers the number or the numbers where you can reach us so that um, you can uh, send your messages uh, through WhatsApp or through SMS. 
uh, the uh, doctor, uh, prophetess, prophetess will be able to look at your questions or your issues and deal with them. 080 Let's have your messages either on WhatsApp or SMS so that um, uh, our, our guest can review some of the things that, uh, that you, are, you are asking. Now, you have said again that um, some of the people who are declared, now some trending stories again uh, will be about uh, pastors or preachers who are using Android phones. And the next thing you hear is, is hello, is that heaven? Hello, is that heaven? Uh, okay, uh, Father, yes, let me. And but that is stupid. Study, study to show yourself approved. A workman that is revived, rightly dividing the word of truth. <laughs> so your onus is for you, to, in order for somebody not to come. I've seen some pastors who stay up their congregation to go and eat grass. <laughs> some are even, I saw them, I don't want to say it on the, in public. Yes. You know, the, 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 the kind of horrible things they're mm. saying. Why? Mm. Because you don't know the word. It's like somebody, you're not, you're not wise. That's why they can come. Um, but if you study the word, where is it in the word that the pastor should come and lie down? Some will use it, they will say, come and suck bread. So yes. this, this all kind of rubbish um, is happening. This thing should not be allowed. But sadly, it's happening. And then the people are looking for signs. And they'll give you a sign. They're looking for signs and wonders. Look for the word. Yes. Word is the way. The word of God is truth. Is the truth. Is the hammer. When you know the word, nobody, nobody can come and uh, pull a wall over my eye. No matter what you say, no matter how you twist it, because I have the spirit of God living inside of me like you do. So that spirit of God is the one who's telling you, when somebody tells you, you hear him tell you, it's a lie. He will whisper to you, it's a lie. If it's true, he'll tell you it's true. So the spirit of God is living on the inside of us, in our hearts. So you say that but our viewers should first be internalize they yes, should internalize all, you the need to have relationship with god with god with jesus have relationship you know as a man and a wife know it themselves so mm. we ought to know christ so how we that's how we ought to know god when you are sleeping god will speak to you in your dream in your vision he will appear to you he will speak to you audibly different types of method god will speak to us but you need to know what method mm. God is using. You if you are the dreamer, God will show you like Joseph. Yes. He, he will show it to you. But if you don't see God, how will he talk to you? And some people, they will, the funny part is they will pray. Oh, Father, they will say for 10 minutes, 20 minutes. When they finish, they get up. Prayer is a two-way thing. When you finish talking, sit down still. Let God speak. Concerning what you have prayed for. Yes, he will tell you, drop you a scripture. He will speak to you. But most people don't know that. They just pray and say, oh, I pray to God. What, would, what did he say to you? Okay. Um, the messages are going out to you there, all over Nigeria, or wherever you are in the world, is asking you, so she's saying to you, what are you hearing from the Lord? Now, in Israel, yes. the birthplace of three most practiced religions in the world, mm -hmm. non-monetary incentives, like kibbutzim, non-monetary, incentives that kibbutzim are being employed to induce change and prosperity among the people but why are we monetizing all aspirations to a better life in nigeria why well, is nigeria that scriptural is freely we have been given freely freely we should give in my 20 years of years i've been a prophet i was born a prophet from birth i have never charged one couple from anybody the person to come out and prove it because I don't believe it's not scriptural. If you go to anybody and they are charging you, run away from that person. They are not, they are fake. True men of God will never charge you for anything. Or somebody will tell you, go and buy, they'll give you oil. Small oil, they say bring 150 pounds or 150,000. For anointed, anointed oil. And you know, it's a lie. Fake. Lie. Because they know you are gullible. That's why I say study your word. The word of God says freely we have been given. 
freely you receive. You see, my policy is if you pray for somebody and that person gets well, God answer them. If out of their volition, they will not go to prophet. Oh, to appreciate to you. To appreciate you. He said, we're 10 lepers not cleansed. Mm, one no, came back to say thank you. So if you if somebody is coming to you, before you come and they say, before you come and see the prophet, put 100,000 down. You better do a 440 and run away. It's their fake. Anything he's telling you is a lie. Okay, so it's right there in your court. She's now challenging you <laughs> to uh, prove your faith in the Lord so that um, it is not demonetized uh, Christianity. That no. Now, um, some people are also of the opinion that uh, should prophetic reflections not be the real protocols to guide governance yes. and strengthen social contracts as we used to have it those days. I mean, you, in the Bible, yes. yes. Before kings would go to war, yes. there, there was someone the prophet. What is God saying, prophet? Even the David, he will call the uh, the psalmist. They will they will they will play. The spirit of God will descend. Then they will give them instruction. The Lord might say, "Okay, you are going to war now. Follow this direction, <laughs> right? But when you are coming, follow this road. Mm. That is prophetic guidance." Because if you follow the same way, they might, you know, you fall you into follow the, your enemy's hands. Yes. So in this season, in this dispensation, the office of a prophet is needed more than ever. Even our leaders in various yes. nations, yes. when God is speaking, I remember during the time of Donald Trump, the Lord told me he was not going to be impeached. I remember my Facebook was going mad. Prophet, how can you say that? But he escaped that uh, impeachment. impeachment. Yes. But the second time, he did not. But you see, is God listen to the word of God listen listen to his voice stop looking at the vessel God is using God can use a little baby small baby two year old three as long as they can speak God can use that child to save life okay now prophetess um, you you yes you're a Nigerian yes but you're also a resident of UK yes and you're a world traveler you have traveled around the globe By the grace now now are, are you not uh, worried that we seem to be still uh, we seem to be generating a colonized mentality in the way we manage our resources, the way we manage our, our, our relationships, the way we manage our affairs as a country. Don't you think we are, it's a, a colonized mentality that we are exhibiting? <laughs> in 2024, when I looked at the, my, the recent crusade that I had for seven days, yes. I, used, I saw how people were hungry. People were fighting because of a bag of rice. Yeah. You know, you ask yourself, did Nigeria put our gear in the reverse gear? Because when I went to England in 1979, this is 45 years ago, there about now. One pound was one naira. So what happened along the way? How come people cannot feed now? How come people are dying? Do you know how many people are dying daily? Are we saying we don't out have of, leaders? Hunger. Are we saying we don't have leaders? Don't our leaders have empathy? Don't that feed? They should put themselves in a position. I can eat. What of people that cannot feed? What of that old woman that cannot feed? What of that child that is sick? That, uh, yes. Recently, my neighbor's uh, wife died. One second. Ebu Ebuka from Al Alaba. Ebuka, yes. Ebuka says, why is religion still a cause of division in this country? That's Ebuka from Alaba. Because we allow ourselves to be manipulated. Hmm. No. It's not, yeah, it's, you know, thank you, we Chibuka. allowed ourselves to be manipulated. Religion should be free. Whatever you like, you want to practice, go yes. and do it. It's not by force. Don't ram your, your whatever you believe on me. But we, the gospel has told us to speak the word, tell the truth that we know that has set us free. But it's up to mm. you to believe it or leave it. But when you begin to manipulate it, if you are not this uh, group of people, <laughs> then we marginalize you. It's wrong. And it's offensive in the eye of God. Because even in this country, if you look at it, some section of yes, this country yes, are yes. being marginalized. Yes. They don't have a voice. And some people, they think that they, they are, are privileged. The, they are privileged. They are the one that is, they know, they, are they the have the right. Of the land. Mm. So it, uh, all this, this is what is causing problem in Nigeria. Okay, now um, we, we, we have some viewers online. If my producer can let me have the next question so that uh, the prophetess can deal with it. But um, now, prophetess, in the cycle of life, yes, uh, faiths are often employed, you know, uh, to break injustice, governance, and uh, even to end poverty. But in Nigeria, is it that we don't practice our faith or that we are denying that, are we are lying about our faith? 
No, it's not that we're lying. Some people, their teaching is wrong. So then, oh. the, 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 so the, fundamentally, the teach, if the teaching is wrong, then the people that they are teaching, they are going to go. It's like the that. wrong it's, way. It's like a little baby. Whatever you put in the, in the child's Just, brain yes. is what they will believe. But if you train the child well, put the right information, then they are being guided well. Faith is the tool in the kingdom. We, that's the currency we exhibit, we use to, to do anything. Before, if you say, if you want to pray, it's because you believe when I pray that that dead man in 2005 she rise. Mm -hmm. The man rose. Why? Because I believe in my heart. Because what? The power God has delegated to me. Every one of us, not just me as a prophetess, God has told us. One second, prophetess. Every one of us. Every one of us. Plus our viewers. Listen, Luke 10, yes. 19, it says, Behold, God has given us power and authority to trample upon serpent and scorpion and upon no, all powers of that. Prophetess. And they will by no means hurt us. I'm talking of non prophetess. No, anybody. We all been we all been um we all been given that. It's not just to me, for you, your children's children's children, for generations to come. God has delegated his power and authority to us. So it's not delegated because I'm a prophetess, no. We all been commanded to lay hand on the sick and the sick will re recover. We all been delegated to, you know, pray for the dead and they will rise. Yes. It's everything is faith. Your faith. The level of your faith. It's if you have a seed. A faith like a, a mustard, mustard seed. You can command the mountain to move and it will move. Whatever we are doing is because we believe in the word. The word is the key. The word is the hammer. All right. Now, uh, so uh, let's uh, juxtapose it properly. Okay. So uh, we are professing the faith, yes. but the faith we are taught may not be the correct one. That's what, that, that, what I'm saying is it depends on who is teaching you. Yes, who, yes. Who's, who's, who's ministry are you sitting on there? Because hmm. some people, when you hear their teaching, you want to be, you, you're going to be sick. Some people, with their teaching, they are walking in error. Because they are not, they don't even have spiritual, uh, like spiritual father that can yes, guide them. Yes. Somebody will say, oh, I've been called as a prophet. The next minute, they'll come out, they have the money, they'll put a church up. They'll, they have not been taught. <laughs> they have not gone to school of prophet. They have not sat under any real great men of God that can guide you. Look, my, me, my spiritual father is Dr. Luca of Mountain of Fire. If I do anything, if I'm teaching an error, they should go and meet him. Your daughter is doing this. Then he will bring me to accountability. That is how it's supposed to be. These are a lot of these people. They don't have people that is, you know, um, looking after them. That can speak into them. That can correct them. When they're making mistakes. When they're making mistakes. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, prophetess, we continue the conversation. We know that because of the way she's uh, being blessed and talented, she will speak for a long time. She's almost like a politician, politician herself. But uh, we'll come back shortly. Uh, let me just, uh, let, let us just take one more before we take a break. Uh, now, that is this. Data analysis are showing that for almost 70% of Gen Z, yes. that is the next generation, about 70% of them, uh, will spend close to 20 hours every day on social media, mm -hmm. and these are uh, leaders of tomorrow. Yes. Are, are you disturbed by that kind of attitude? Of course uh, I'm disturbed. Attitude? Because um, a lot of our children don't even believe there's God. That's the truth. So we are losing that generation unless we do something critically to bring them into alignment. <laughs> well, she has nailed it. We will take a break. When we come back, you can join the conversation. She says many of the Gen Z's don't even believe there is God on, until all of us will begin to wake up to that fact, then we may be losing, okay, that generation. Okay, thank you for staying with us. Uh, we need to take that breather so that the prophetess can, you know, adjust, you know, uh, because she, she was already speaking, you know, prophetically again to all Nigerians. Well, wherever you are in the world, we have invited you to join us. Let me run the numbers again so you can send in your questions or your queries on some of the issues she has placed on the hot seat. 080-3589-4722. 080-3589-4722. Send us WhatsApp or SMS. No calls, please. No calls. Just send us WhatsApp or SMS, and she would be able to respond to that. So you ended up the first part of our conversation that 
Gen Z, yeah. if you're not sure, if you don't know what we are doing, we're going we're to lose a, lo a whole generation that don't believe in it. Because even if you look at them, most of them are so preoccupied with internet. If uh, anything, you devote your time will become your God. That's your way, your, your source of is. And a lot of them, the, the parents are no more taking, hmm. like when we're young, our parents, when we're going to church, yes. you must go to church whether you like yes, it or not. Yes. So, some now, because we, we have this liberty, we say, well, we want to give the children liberty. Huh. Train the way a child should go. When they are old, they will not depart from it. If you are using that and these children, they, will not, they don't want to know anything. So we are, are we going? Are we saying we are going to lose a whole generation that don't know God? Then the punishment is on us, the parents. It's not on the children, because we are the one to bring the correction. We are the one to show them, guide them until they are of age. When they are of age, they decide whatever they want to do. But even you, as a parent, you still need to be praying for your children so that they will come in alignment with what you have put inside of them. Okay. All right. We also have uh, this trending story. It's a big debate now globally yeah. that uh, Nigeria actually is is uh, practicing what they call uh, re re religious economy, whereas the rest of the world is practicing what they call knowledge economy, which is actually governing, you know, uh, global you know, relationships and you know, global progress and all that. So, religious economy—that's what we seem to be interested in in Nigeria. But globally, everybody is looking at knowledge economy, where they're sharing new understanding, perspectives, and 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 innovations. So, uh -huh. see, see, this is what I said. It all boils down to your teaching. Everything we do in moderation. Somebody can mm. say, now, as you mean, you are believing God, right, for a house, which God can do it, and I've seen it done it several times. But you have to teach that person. Number one, if you believe in God, you either have a job you're doing, right? <laughs> Or you have a business. It's not about Yahoo Yahoo. It's not about rich or killing. So this is the things we need to be programming in our children's head. So if we are just saying, uh, just pray. Prayer with act action is dead. That's what the Bible said. If you are praying and say, as you mean, there's fire in the house. God forbid, right? And then you say, oh Lord, get me out of this house. You will die there. Stupid. You need to get out of that place. The same thing happens when we are just saying, we are just praying and we are not walking. Mm. How is it? it is God will bless what is in your hand. It's the seed in your hand that God is going to bless. So, so if, if you refuse to, to walk, walk, what is God going to bless? And you are blaming God. No. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. If you mm. know, yes. So even when the scripture says, seek, seek knowledge. knowledge. Yes, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. If you know the Lord, if you want to do anything, you sit down, you calculate it. Even the Bible says, before you say you are building it, yeah. have you sat down to calculate the cost? So that when you're halfway, your money will not finish. And people will be laughing at you. And people will be laughing. And you say, it's God. It's not God. It's because you have not taken your time to study what you want to do. <laughs> okay, all right. Um... That, that is another issue that we, we have uh, heard from the uh, uh, prophetess. Now, let's see how we can also get, you know, directions on... Uh, now, how disturbed are you looking at the trending story in Nigeria right now, uh, especially now that you're building an orphanage to, to house, you know, poor people? How disturbed are you about IDPs, hmm. particularly the children? the youths and the women who are caught in this trauma. How disturbed are you about their fate? I mean... As a woman of God and as a mother, I am a mother of three children, grown-up children. It saddens me because it, we have never had in the history of this country yes. where we're having an IDP. Yes. It's this place, place. Yes. people. Yes. And even the worst part of it is that now where they, the so far place that they put these people that they are suffering, they still go there and kidnap them. One second, please. We have a Sadiq. Sadiq from Guaripa, Sadiq says, talking about love, would you say we love ourselves as a nation? No. No. Uh, uh, we don't love thank ourselves. You, thank, you, thank you, Sadiq. Thank you, Sadiq. We don't love ourselves. Do you know why I said that, Brother Sadiq? If you love your neighbor, you will give to them. You will not turn your blind eye when your neighbor is sick. Or if you, if you have a car, your neighbor needs it. Maybe the wife is sick in the night. You will close the door, say, I beg you, I'm sleeping. That's not love. 
love gifts. John 3, 17, uh, 16 says, And God so loved the world that he gave. What did he give? He gave himself to the world. So love gives. Love is not a order. Love does not distort. Okay, um, Austin from Delta, that is Agbo, from Agbo particularly, he says, in what way can we love, or in what way can love be promoted by our leaders, by our leaders? By example, showing example to us. You can't say you love us as our leader, and your people are dying. They will give um, um, some allocations at the Senate, House of Representatives, and the House of Assembly. Yes, yes. How, do you uh, how do you distribute this? Do you know some people have become billionaires? From hurting, what is meant for you to share to your own people? You are now the one oppressing your own people, and you want God to be happy. God cannot be happy with such leaders. Never. <laughs> okay, uh, we, we have uh, uh, so many callers on right now, prophetess, so we have to rush our questions. Okay. Uh, Balaji from Joss, hold on. Olu Obi also from Joss, hold on. Um, we have um, a lot of your see from Ogun State here. How do you think we, as citizens, can continue to spread love amongst ourselves for the growth of our nation? That is Olutoyosi, Olatoyosi from Ubu You start State. from your house, your neighbor. From your street? Your street. Now that uh, there's uh, this Ramadan that is going on, yes. I'm a Christian. If not that, I just finish uh, <laughs> feeding 3,000 people in Kogi. If I have the opportunity every evening, I will, buy, I will cook a big cooler of rice and distribute it with drinks for Muslims that, who yeah, are breaking for, fast for Muslims who are breaking fast so it's not about Christianity let me tell you it's your love that people see it's the Christ in us that people see that they will, that will be drunk that will draw people to us if your heart is as cold as stone and you call yourself a Christian who wants to be a Christian okay so she has put the, uh, the ball in your court again if you are a Christian and you cannot even show love to Muslims, then how can you be a Christian? Um, Balaji from Joss. Balaji says, um, uh, good day, ma'am. Thanks for this, uh, uh, your, your talk. My question is in view of the happening in our country right now, mm -hmm. and the focus is more on prosperity, mm -hmm. on healing, and politics, and so on and so on. What impact has the church, therefore, been making on the society? Wouldn't you say the, church, uh, the churches are losing Focus and do not understand their roles anymore in our society. That's Balaji from Joss. Yeah, uh, Balaji, God bless you. I don't think when we generalize, it's not good. Mm. Some few churches are still doing the right thing, but very few, right? So the role of the church, like especially now that we have famine, I'll consider it we have famine. Famine in, in, in Nigeria. Nigeria. People yes. are dying, you know. The role of the churches is, is to be able to at least give to your own members. If you can't even reach us, give to your members. Make sure that they are not hungry. People, if you know, because at the end of the day, these people, they contribute their tithe to you. They give their love offering. They give their first food to your church. So when there is a need, then the church will give back to the society. Hmm. Yes, that's how I feel it should be done. Okay. Um, um, Abdul, Abdul Hakim, Abdul Hakim Lawal from uh, Katsina says, could you imagine that there is a school with two principles, if if this can happen, so who makes the different orders and who make different timetable? Prophetess. So if there are two principles. Yes, in a school. In a school, how yeah. can there how can there be two captains in one in ship. one ship? You know that they're already sinking. It's only one one leader that will decimate, that will bring the instruction down. He said, from the Aaron's head, hmm. the oil runs down the all to the garment. So it's, a, it's an error already having to, that means there's no unity in that school. Mm. There is dysfunction in that school. They are not following, nobody's ready to submit to one another in love. <laughs> that school should be closed down because there will be chaos. Halima from Katsina, uh, how does lack of love and empathy hinders the nation's development and what should be done to correct it? Empathy. Halima, Halima. Uh, Sister Halima, what empathy means putting yourself in, in the, somebody else's shoes. If the person is in pain, you are feeling their pain. So as a nation, until we begin to empathize for, with one another, nothing can work, <laughs> you know? Nothing can work. You know, in the book of Ephesians 4.32, it said, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you right so if you are for you to show empathy 
you first of all put yourself in that person's position. So, okay, if I'm the one, how will I feel? If I treat this person like this, how will this person feel? That is what we call empathy. But when our heart has become cold like stone, we do not see, we see somebody is suffering, they turn their blind eye. Do you think God is happy? God is not happy. And that's that sometimes something, some evil will come on you, you won't know. Because of what? Of your behavior. God is sitting in heaven watching us. All right. Uh, thank you again for that. Incidentally, that, that, that actually is what somebody also is now saying. He says, can we ever overcome such crippling behaviors as self-conceit mm -hmm. uh, of our elites or even the foolish expectations of the poor? You know, in Galatians 6, 2, it says, carry each other's burden. In this way, you fulfill the law of Christ. This verse speaks to, to, to the empathetic act of sharing and easing the loads of others, mm. reflecting a fundamental aspect of Christian love and community. <laughs> empathy. Carry each other's burden. Is our leaders carrying our burden? Mm. Are they saying they are not hearing people are dying in this country? Are you guys not seeing it? You ca can you not see it? The fact that you are eating three square, square meals a day, your children are tucked away nicely abroad. What of other people? What of other people's children? How are you reaching out to them? In love. The love should start from Tinubu down to, uh, to, to, the, local to the local government. That's how it's supposed to be. But Tinubu cannot do everything. In Tinubu, there should be every, every aspect of him being spread across yes. Nigeria. Now we are, people are suffering. Last night, I didn't sleep because there was no light. A nation that prides itself for producing oil, and yet is so shameful and disgraceful that we don't even have electricity in this country. And who, how many years has it been now? 63 years. And we are like this. Sometimes I wish the English people would come back. Now, that's, that, that, that again is another issue on the table that is trending because uh, some people are saying that, um, as it were, uh, Nigeria seems to have been a victim or a, 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 a continuous victim of neo-colonialism because all our decisions about our economic aspirations, about our political relationships are still determined by the colonial masters. Yeah, because, uh, you know, this sadly to say, even though I'm a Nigerian, uh, uh, you know, please don't be offended. We are corrupt. Very corrupt. Desperately corrupt. One of the former British uh, uh, prime, prime ministers. Minister, come on. He said Nigeria is uh, one of the most corrupt countries. And the, but we need to prove them wrong. Hmm. I like that. We need to, we prove, need them, to, to prove, prove them wrong. Nigerians are the most educated in every facet of life. Go any country in the in the business world, in the medical, in yes. every. They are at the top. Yes. But the problem this country is facing is good leadership. Good leadership. Okay. All right. Again. So we we, we now another we have another uh, uh, viewer online. It says, "I'm Thomas from Abuja. Mm -hmm. How can we show love to our Muslim brothers and sisters?" That is uh, Thomas from Abuja. Give to them. Give to them. Cook for them. If you have money, share it. Don't say it because you're a Christian. Share. When I did my crusade, I did not differentiate that whether you're Muslim or traditional. As many people that came to the crusade ground, they had food. Show love. You did not consider the no. fact that you are a Christian or no, Muslim no, no, or no, traditionalist. No, no, no. I saw people in hijab. They came. They even came to the church. <laughs> yes. When you show the true love of God, it will draw people. You don't need to preach much because they can see the sincerity of, of purpose oh. in you. You don't have to, because sometimes your talking self, talk without action is dead. Nothing. If you're telling me you love me and you, and you know that I'm hungry, you didn't show me love. Forget it. If I just went to preach in Kogi State and I didn't bring the outreach side of the food to, I've got to compensate see, the people. What am I talking about? People are just going to. I said it's a lady fainted. Yes. We have to bring food, give her food to eat. You preach, give something to eat. Now, incidentally, uh, prophetess, how do you react to this? Um, uh, uh, well, little gist that now Nigerians are going through difficulties to access food, to access money because of the hyperinflation. But no intervention is coming from churches or some, mosques. Some churches, ah, some churches are giving. I know some churches that are giving. 
because I remember during that time of COVID, uh, Dr. Lukoya gave the whole people in that Onike. Daddy did not check whether you're Muslim or he was doing it house by house, bag of rice. That's how he was distributing it. So some churches are doing so it. Some churches but are doing many it. of them are not doing but it. But many are not. Instead of giving, they are even extorting. Okay, all right. Um, we have um, Abdul, Abdul Hakim Lawal again uh, from Daura. He says, everyone should practice his religion according to his faith, yes. frankly, for better living in Nigeria. Yes. That is. Nobody should push anybody. Uh, well, if you if you are in the mosque, you are preaching, talking about Islam to to your people, then they will embrace it. If I'm in church, let me say what God is saying. Don't bring your own religion and oppose it on me to you know to swallow it. Who can think? No, everybody. This nation should be free to be able uh, you know to, to to express our views on religion purposes. Don't don't press somebody. You if you are not a Muslim, no, you cannot, no, no. Yes. if you are not a Christian. Christian. Just speak If you're not a traditionalist, let them freely. Let them. That's why this country is a free country, if I may say, as, as a quote, right? Because there are some things you will say on air that uh, will not be palatable. Okay, all right. Constitutionally, mm -hmm. some people are saying that many Nigerians don't have enough knowledge of the Constitution. Of course. Let's therefore translate to indigenous languages. That is from the school, primary school. If you ask me, I've been out of this country, even though I come often. I don't know the, the, most because, of the, the yes. constitution. But start it. Education is key. Start it from primary school. Let it be part of the curriculum. So the children will know. They grow up. This is if you are saying something, they can debate it. Yes. And even quote the the, uh, the, the, the constitution. constitution. Okay, all right. So the uh, she's saying that uh, the constitutional rights of the children should actually be ingrained from childhood. Yes. Now um uh, I have a question. Is it allowed for a, Chris, a Christian man to marry a Muslim woman? My mother, my, my mom, <laughs> my late mom was a Muslim and my father was a Christian. Yeah, they married. Today we have four prophets in my home. So it's up to you what, what you feel is best for you. But, you know, the way the Christian said, he said, do not equally be yoked with an unbeliever. Yes. But at the end of the day, it's up to you. If your faith, because if as a Christian, if you marry an unbeliever, your faith can cover that person. Okay, well, I don't know. Uh, what is your last uh, uh, statement to Nigerians, especially at this uh, gruesome hour that we're going through all this uh, uh, hyperinflation? Um, my, my, my own suggestion, I, can't, I cannot advise, suggestion is that our government to please reconsider some of these policies. Remember, you're, you are there through the help of uh, each individual's vote. So that's what brought you to where you are today. But you must, you, now that you are there, yes. you can see these people are hungry. Some are dying. Hospitals, they cannot pay bills. Some people are walking on the road. It's like, it's, you know, they will soon faint. I have never in my 63 years of existence seen the level of suffering we are now. So uh, the president, Mr. Tinebu, and your, 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 happy, your team, please. Think again and reconsider. I don't know if this subsidy of a thing that you remove is cause so much mayhem in Nigeria than is much needed. You know, even though you might think you are trying to reshape the future of Nigeria, but now the people are dying. Which, which, which Nigerians are going to be left? Thank you very much for coming on Close Flow. It's been a pleasure having you again. Thank you very much. And thank you for your prophetic um, uh, advices. Yes. All right. And so for all of us here in the studio, we always say that the closed flow program is never over. It does not end when we actually uh, allow our guests to go. It continues because we promote on social media mm -hmm. so you can share with your friends, you know, what our distinguished guests are actually you know, placed on the table. She has said so much, but the summary of it is that um, with true love, and with sincere empathy, we can actually change the narrative about Nigeria and how we can become one united nation. So until next week, it is bye from us.